Hi, I'm Richard Tendick, and if you're like me, you probably hate your uh, bandsaw. I hated mine because the, I was constantly having to reach up here to turn the knob to adjust the tension, removing, uh, reducing the tension in order to change the blade, turning it back up, and then not really knowing what the proper tension was. So what I did was I have modified my bandsaw to have an air cylinder on top and air controls down on a box by the side of the bandsaw. And by doing that, I can now control the tension and speed up the reduction and increase of the tension. Let me show you how it works. You open it up, now you see the upper wheel. All I want, when I want to change the blade, all I do is reach down and pull out this knob, and you see how the wheel starts to go down. The blade is now nice and loose. At this point, I can take the blade off and change it. And then when I get the new blade back on, it's just a matter of pushing the knob back in and the wheel starts to go back up. I keep it at a relatively low speed so that uh, you'll have time to turn the wheel and keep the blade centered as it's going back up. The tension on the blade, and we'll talk about how to get the proper tension a little later on, but the tension on the blade is simply a matter of turning this knob on an air regulator and watching the gauge. Turn it to whatever your proper setting is, you will now have the exact same repeatable pressure or tension on the blade. And at the end of the day, you just turn the knob the other way and the pressure is now down close to zero, removing all tension from the saw frame. All right, some of the components that you're going to be using are pneumatic components that many, many people don't have any idea what these particular items are. Many of my friends have no idea what an air cylinder is. This, for example, is one type of an air cylinder. What it is, is there's a piston that moves up and down, and as you apply air pressure to one side, the uh, rod extends, apply pressure to the other side, and the pressure brings it back down. Now, the way you find out how much force it is involved is that you take the area of the piston times the air pressure you use, and that'll give you an idea of how much pressure you will be getting, generating out of the air cylinder. Okay, an air regulator controls the air pressure. You have high pressure air coming in one side, and as you turn the knob, the output pressure either goes up or down. Now, it's really important that you know which way that the air is supposed to flow. They always have a little arrow cast into the, uh, the body of the air cylinders or air regulator so that you know which way it's supposed to go. With the arrow pointing that way, high pressure air comes in here and it uh, regulated pressure comes out of here. Now, there's two additional holes on a regulator, one on here and one here. Now, that's for the air gauge. This is an example of an air gauge. It's usually a smaller uh, output port than there is for the input and the output. And with two of them, and you only need one for the gauge, so whichever one you want to use for your air gauge, you take the enclosed uh, set screw or plug and screw it in nice and tight on the other side. Otherwise, you'll have air leaking out. Okay, this is the air control valve that we use to uh, adjust the up and down for the cylinder. It's what is called a two-way five port. If you notice that there are three threaded holes on one side, and as you flip it over, there's two holes. So when you go to set this thing up, you take the regulated air that comes in from your regulator and you put it into this center hole, and it's marked P. Now, once you have that in there, you'll find that the air goes through and comes out either this port 
or this port. Then, when you want to change the direction of your uh, air cylinder, you pull the knob out, and now, instead of the air going from P to B, it goes from P to A. Pushing it back in reverses the direction. Now, because you want to make sure that whichever side of the air cylinder that is not having the high pressure air go to it, it's got to have the air exhaust. That's what these two ports are for. They exhaust the air from the side that's not being, have the pressure applied to it. So, pressure in, pressure out, pressure in, pressure out. And this is just to exhaust any of the air that's not being used on the other side of the cylinder. The last component that you're going to be uh, using in here is called a needle valve. What it is is just a little block that's got a needle adjustment on one side. And the more you screw it in, the slower the wheel goes. Now, it's uh, important to know that if you plug it in and the needle doesn't seem to control anything, you've got it in backwards. Flip it over, plug it back in, and then it will. Okay, blade tension is kind of a nebulous thing here. Manufacturers will tell you things like do the push test to see how much it deflects and others will tell you just follow what the manufacturer of the bandsaw blade or bandsaw company has done to uh, give you the proper tension. One of the things that most bandsaw blade manufacturers talk about is the flutter test. What you do is you raise everything up Take your guide blocks out of uh, in contact with the blade, remove your throat plate, do everything like that, get the longest stretch of uh, unobstructed blade you can, then you turn on your bandsaw. Now, at a relatively low point right here, I see some flutter occurring. When the flutter is going like that, you know that the tension is way too low. So you gradually increase the tension, in this case I'm turning up the air pressure, until the fluttering stops. And right about there it stopped. So I'll give it a little bit more. And right about there is the proper tension for that blade. 